What's going on guys? I'm just going to make another update video on my 2020 Trek 920. I have a few other videos I made uh, about it so you can check those out. I bought this bike a few months ago. I put a couple hundred miles on it and I just wanted to do another review because when I go on YouTube there's not many videos on these bikes and I know for me I can just sit there and watch videos all day long about bikes and stuff and so um the more we can more content we can put out there the better now in the, the this is the configuration the bike comes in w with the drop handlebars when i bought it it comes with the front and the rear rack and uh uh so i've done a few things in the original videos i had flat handlebars so i i really hated drop bars i just hate them they're terrible they're the worst things ever and i've always had flat bars and i've always really enjoyed flat bars and I wanted to get a bike that if I wanted to convert to flat bars, I could run either flat bar bars or drop bars because of the top tube uh, length. It can really accommodate both. And I rode this bike for a little bit with the road bars and I did some gravel riding and I realized that, well, one, gravel riding sucks. And two, it's even worse with drop bars. So I put some flat bars on there. I did some gnarly single track, dropped in, real big rocks. I mean, 40 miles an hour down the hill, just <laughs> blasting this thing around. And it, I mean, I've done crazy stuff uh, with this bike. I mean, two hours to the top and 10 minutes to the bottom kind of hills. Just bombing it down these fire roads with big old golf ball sized rocks. I mean, this thing is a beast. But, um,. But I realized that if that's the kind of riding you want to do, get yourself an XC bike. Get yourself a full suspension or a hardtail. Um, you know, gravel riding, if it's on, like, really nicely groomed, non-technical uh, dirt trails or something like that, this bike is king. I mean, I wouldn't want to have anything less than a 2-inch tire. I rode the checkpoint that has the 40C tires. I mean, those things are for children. Do you want these? If you want the two inch tires, if you're going to do gravel riding. So this is an awesome bike for gravel riding, but I don't really see myself doing much gravel riding. Um, in any case, I realized that I really, I was enjoying going off roading for a little bit. And so I put the flat bars on, I put some four piston brakes on there and I was rocking that out for a little bit. But I realized that if that's the kind of riding I want to do with this bike, then I need to just get a mountain bike. Uh, if I'm going to take this off-road and do trails that require a flat bar instead of the drop bars, then I need to get an XC bike. So I decided, hey, I'm going to put these drop bars back on and really focus on using this as a commuter and as a road, a, sort of a road bike with a little bit of off-road capability. And so that's what I've done. I put the um, the drop bars back on. The one thing that made the biggest difference with this bike is I put a shorter stem on here. It comes with like a 100 or 110 mil stem, and I put a 60 mil. This is by um, Dimensions. I'll put a link in the description below. It was like 30 bucks on eBay, and it's an awesome looking stem. There's no logos except this tiny little mark right here. So um, uh, it's really nice. It's not branded or anything. And that's made a huge difference it makes the steering more responsive it's shortened the reach by an inch and a half so i don't feel like i'm laying out flat on this thing it has a really good posture that's comfortable yet um, moderately aggressive so i've really enjoyed having that stem i can't express enough how much of a difference having a shorter stem makes on the bike i still have the 180 mil shimano rotor on there that i got on ebay that was like 20 or 30 bucks uh, I put some, like, um, frame tape on here, uh, on both of the, um, forks, as well as the seat stays and the chain stays. You can barely see it, but it's on there. And I'll put a link in the description for the, the company that I, I bought it from. It's 3M, 3M. Um, I st still have the race face Chester pedals. Uh, these things are kind of annoyingly big, I will say. I mean, they're, they're very big. Um, I would say for mountain biking, they're great. Um, I would say they're probably a little bit overkill for commuting. I mean, they just look kind of silly. I mean, I like the color, but the, the, they're so big. They look really kind of silly and detract from sort of the... I, like, I think this bike's kind of a good-looking bike. And they just... It's kind of like a little kid wearing big shoes. It just looks goofy, like clown shoes or something, because they're just so big. Um, the bike looks more sleek when I put the, uh, the XT uh, clip on. Pedals. I still have the Bontrager kickstand. I know it looks goofy, 
but you know what i love being able to get off this bike and it just hangs out i don't have to lean it up against stuff and that'll save me from wear and tear on the sides of the hoods and all that um two inch tires again there's plenty of clearance this is why i love these videos is i want to show you how much clearance i have put um two and a half inch tires on the front and two and uh two two and a quarter inch tires on the rear with plenty of space plenty of space uh i can fit my whole fingers through here plenty of plenty of space for a uh uh if you want to put a a mud guard or something in there plenty of space and uh but you don't really want to go much much bigger than than two and a quarter um you can't really appreciate same thing at the bottom i can i can squeeze a finger it's not quite as much space as the top but um but it's there so now you guys can see how much clearance you have so a good amount of clearance you could fit some wire tires on here but like i said if you want to fit wire tires on here get yourself a mountain bike um, I can't wait until I wear through these tires. I really want to put some like 40 or 45 C tires on here. Just make it a little bit faster for the road because it is a little kind of, kind of sounds like a monster truck going down the road. It's, the tires are very loud. Um, I don't want to put like skinny tires on here, but something that would be good for touring. Um, plenty of mounts. It's got uh, two mounts in the rear. It's got those mounts up there. It has another mount for the bottom of the mud guard uh the larges have two sets of mounts water bottle mounts on the um, down tube um this is a 54 centimeter so it's got a pair there a pair there and another pair under there another pair right there so if you're going to get another uh, a bike like a touring bike or something like that you want at least two on the fork that way you can put water bottle cages on the fork now i also bought this Blackburn bag. It's a large, size large. It's the Blackburn Outpost bag on Amazon. It was like 40 bucks or something. I'll put that in the description. And um, the large fits this frame barely. I mean, it's kind of, it's actually like an inch too big for the frame, but I'd rather have it be a tiny bit too big than the medium or the small or whatever. What size is this? I don't remember. I think this is the large. This has got to be the large. The medium is just, um, it's a little bit too small, and I'd rather make as much use of the triangle as I can. Still have the same stock seat on there. I put Mr. Tuffy tire liners in the tires as well as the um, uh, green slime in the tubes. Um, I would not, the one, oh, this was a pain in the ass was switching these cockpits out because every the one thing i hate about shram well first off i prefer shimano brakes over shram i don't think shram brakes are that good i think they're actually quite bad um the worst part about this bike is where you feed in where the hell is ah uh, you feed in the cable in that hole right there and it's uh you it you need to have a brand new cable that has the soldered end on it because it bends. You put it in and it bends and it wraps around and does a U-turn. So if you're going to change out the cockpit, make sure that you're certain you want to do it because you really have to get a new derailleur cable every time you put the, the road bars back on the bike. Um, and... Unless, of course, I guess you could pull pull the whole thing off and keep the cable in place. But if you're going to change out the cable, don't think you cannot use that cable anymore. If you're going to put a cable through these things, um, some of the like SRAM Reds, I think the cable just goes straight in, so that's a lot easier. But um, if you're going to pull the derailleur cables out of these um, the um, SRAM S700s, do not uh, try and put it back in. You need a brand new cable every time. Um, so that's about it. Uh, I'm done blabbing. Um, there was one other thing. Oh yeah, the one thing that I like about this bike over some other gravel bikes, especially steel bikes, is the fact that it's got internal cable routing. So um, the uh, the front um, derailleur and the rear derailleur, really nice design by Trek. I'll give Trek that. They have a really sleek design. I love how it's underneath. Um, 
and uh, really good internal cable routing. It does have the brake, which is fine. I'm okay with the brake being external because uh, you don't want to have to bleed your brakes every time you switch them out. So I'm okay with the external brakes cables, but it's just really slick. You only have that one cable, and I could, I can probably tuck it in maybe a little bit more, but like who cares? It's it's just a it's a clean look on the frame. Um, so, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, again, I think it's a great bike. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm hoping that I continue to enjoy riding it in the future. I plan on doing a ride down the Oregon coast next year. It's like 380 miles down the coast. Probably take about uh, seven days to do that and I plan on bringing this bike so I'll make a vid uh, video series on that too if you guys want to check that out uh, cheers ah one more thing this is my favorite feature about this bike is the through axles and that's the one reason why I got this bike over some of the other touring bikes other steel bikes the Trek 520 I really wanted a bike that was stiff that could hold the weight and that wouldn't flex under heavy load and it comes with a massive uh, 15 mil through axle on the front. I'll try and do this one-handed. Um, the one nice thing about this bike over some of the other gravel bikes is because it takes a 15 mil through axle and a lot of the components are all mountain bike components. It takes a 15 mil and a 12 mil. I mean, that's these are they're not boost spaced hubs. But they're your traditional, I think it's a 142 in the rear and a 110 in the front. So your, you know, top of the line hubs uh, spacing as of like three years ago. And um, it's got uh, the uh, the sh SRAM gearing. This is mountain bike gearing from three, from like five to three years ago. It's all mountain bike parts. And mountain bike parts are so much cheaper than... Uh, than road bike parts so having a bike that i mean i mean having that and being able to fit that on the roof rack and and you put the wheel back in and it just it's consistent every time which i just really enjoy the consistency of using um through axles check it out there you go all right that's all.